exploring the practice of skillful living with Francis. Hello, dear Francis. Yeah. <laughs> We're at part two. You've been good. Yes, yes. Okay, let's let's start again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good morning, dear Francis. Well, actually, good evening for you. Francis is in Singapore. Exactly. I'm in Montreal, <laughs> worlds apart, yet so close. Mm -hmm. So nice to be together for our part two, practicing and exploring skillful living. Yeah, the art of skillful living, it is. Huh? Yeah. Mm. yeah, in part one, we uh, explored um, the sutra on the blessings or the blessed conditions. Yeah that would enable uh, uh, skillful living. It was not at all a to-do list, yeah, uh, if you remember well. And we, we were so into it that we only analyzed like the, the, the nine fir or the 10 or so first one, first elements or first conditions of a whole list of 38, yeah. yeah. But in the end, when I uh, read through the text, um, I feel that, uh, we were so much in the gist of it that it didn't need uh, uh, much more analyzing than, than than we actually did. We 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 were we 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 have been setting ourselves on the road. What was exactly the message of uh, of that? Uh, once the the conditions have been fulfilled, mm -hmm. we can set ourselves on the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and. Uh, the, 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 the Mangala Sutta that we uh, looked at yesterday is part of a, a group of texts uh, called uh, Sutta Nipata. And the Sutta Nipata is, is it's a small collection of small essential texts that are actually being recited by, um, by Buddhist communities in, in, in South Asia yeah, on a daily basis. And, and even children are invited to learn these texts by heart and recite them. So it's really the daily practice uh, that, um, that practitioners of, of, uh, of Buddhist philosophy um, and the Buddhist way of life um, uh, do every day. So it's, it's, it's really basic stuff. Uh, I find it uh, important. You mentioned about children, how this notion of identity, when a child can identify with something grand and beautiful from a young age, uh, it, it, it impacts how they show up for life, you know, uh, as they mature uh, into adults. So I find it beautiful that children have an opportunity to really embody these beautiful, very practical teachings um, to their life. And, and I'm also reminded of how this was taught. I imagine a picture, an image of a Buddha under a tree teaching mm -hmm. students open air, open skies. Mm -hmm. And I just want to invite myself and whoever is listening and watching to also be in that, that sincere spirit of, uh, of, of, of the times in which this was taught. There's something beautiful about almost imagining that you're there that I find brings this more to life. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's indeed uh, indeed the case. But children are really, really great at this, and they love this, and they and 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 they sing this. And uh, whoever is interested in this can can find many recordings of this on YouTube or or, or whatever. Yeah. The, the, these are really the the, the the basic cornerstone texts of the practice. And today uh, we sort of consider that the conditions have been fulfilled and once the conditions are fulfilled we can really practice and what is it that we will practice well it, it might be common knowledge but it isn't to to everybody that the, the real essential buddhism has actually very little to do with uh, with religion it's just it's a way of life so what is it that we practice? We practice loving kindness, most of all. Yeah. Mm. That's the purpose, because everything has to do with suffering, and we have to overcome suffering, and we can overcome suffering mainly by practicing loving kindness. Yeah. And so the text today is called the Karaniya Metta Sutta, and uh, metta is the word that generally is translated as loving kindness, yeah? Sometimes as compassion, yeah? 
yeah. if you want, but I would prefer uh, to see the word kindness in there. Yeah? Mm. And, and karaniya just happens to be the first word of the sutta. That's why it's the, su the, the sutra ab uh, about loving kindness, starting with the word karaniya. Ah, yeah? okay. And karaniya means that uh, what, what ought to be done. Yeah? Mm what ought to be done. So you could also translate the title as the sutra uh, about the, the kind of loving ki kindness that ought to be practiced. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it starts. And it's a, it's, it's a text in three parts. Yeah? Uh, first, it's what we already know from, from what we did yesterday. It's a new numerical analysis yeah, of the kind of person who is ready to practice mm -hmm. uh, today there are no longer conditions today yeah. they're to do yeah. you know yeah. so it's so 15, yeah. Mm. yeah 15 points of attention yeah 15 points of attention <laughs> yeah. um, and then and then the second part there is an analysis of um, the concept of universality mm. because the idea is that we practice loving kindness universally but literally universally and this is why it has been deemed necessary to sort of present a, sh a small a short analysis of what universality really means mm. and then the third part is a how to okay if i understand correctly is this the second part of the mangalam sutta or is it an entire different sutra and uh, altogether uh, no the three parts of the same uh, karaniya okay. metta sutta ah okay okay Karaniyam Metasutta. Yeah. Yeah. When it starts with Karaniyam Attakusalina Yantam Santam Padam Abhisamecha. That's 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 how it how it starts with these words. Uh -huh. If you know, my dear friend Bhaskar, what is truly good for you, and when the conditions have been fulfilled for you to understand the possibility of reaching a state of perfect peace, then this is how you need to get your life going. That's the introductory sentence. Okay. Start. As a person capable, really upright, gently spoken, agile and flexible in mind, and completely unconceited, and once you have started like this, then become contented and happy let all your worries go and lead a life as simple and uncomplicated as you can that's so beautiful there's so much there Different take the example. posture of that you're capable this is so big just that alone just to hold that posture that yes, you are capable. Uh, there's so much unworthiness sometimes that comes up in myself. I, I suspect in others. Um, just to pick ourselves up again, straighten our spine, mm -hmm. and uh, assert and affirm, yes, I am capable of uh, living a life good for myself, good for those around me. Um, speaking gently uh, flexibility i like this word flexibility yeah. how do you how do you interpret this i i wonder uh, what, what comes up for you when you hear these words again i i i think when it says that we we have to start as a capable person in the start i understand acknowledge that you can acknowledge the possibility yeah and then being upright i think means just go for it 
just don't, for me, it means just don't waver. Don't find reasons to not practice this. You know? Just go for it, you know. And then, well, gently spoken, we came to it yesterday. Yeah? Only, only speak nicely because you can only think nicely. Yeah? Mm. And then flexible, I think, is, is be open for everything. Let life happen to you. Let things happen to you and, and embrace and adapt to whatever comes your way. Yeah? But in this circumstance of whatever comes your way, always choose the simple possibility where your life remains uncomplicated. Mm. So... This, this is how, how, how this speaks to me. And this is also what I try to do in life. Simple life. No. Keep the thoughts and mind simple. Um, yeah, complex life, complex mind. Yeah, we, yeah. There's, there's certainly a tendency to complicate life nowadays, uh, especially when it comes to information. We can bombard ourselves with so much information, distraction, that really serve no meaningful purpose. And... Uh, there's something to be said for making a to not do list. You know, we make to do lists that is, <laughs> you know, it's helpful <laughs> to keep oriented, but a to not do list might be mm -hmm. equally helpful. You know, what can I take out that allow me to simplify my life? Um, yeah. And and something has to really go through a certain filter before it's worthy of one's attention in, in a sense yeah. so that we don't get attend to every noise and distraction that's out there. Yeah. And there's also a sense in the, in, in the expression that we need to drop all, all our worries. Eh? And I think dropping worries is also connected with leading a simple life. Leading a simple life, for me, resonates in the order of, of building in r simple routines. Mm. Like simple steps in the day. Yeah? And when you're completely mindfully occupied with what you do, there is no time to worry. Yes. And yes. worrying becomes meaningless. Yeah. It, it has to do with, once your, your, your mind is fully occupied with, with, with the now, there is no time for worries. But worries are mainly connected to projections in the future mm. or feelings of the possibility of loss of what we have achieved until now. So worries are connected to the past and the future. Mm. Whereas um, the mindful state is now. Yes, yes. So the worry requires the fields of past and future to exist. Yes. And, uh, when, and what I'm hearing is when you have a simple life with certain structure um, that, that invites in this quality of presence by natural consequence the worrying diminishes or even yeah. ceases yeah and we will the, the the essence of the text is that we will need all this to practice loving kindness to a universal degree this mm -hmm. is how it goes on yeah make sure that all experiences of your senses are calm and controlled. Be duly respectful to everything that is in or outside of you. Do not be attached to whatever kind of relationship obligations. Free yourself from all this. I think that is important too, that we need to stay free of all this, Com because these complications in, in relationships, it's, 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 it, it fills our minds. We have to be free of this. And then, and then comes like a, a, a two verses that, that sing out what you would feel then. Yeah. May you not commit even the most trivial thing that the wise 
would censure in another. I love this. Okay. I, I, I love the wit of the author who says that it's so much easier for us to find fault in what another does than in ourselves. Yeah. So may you not commit even that trivial thing that wise people yeah. would fault or would judge in someone else, not in themselves perhaps, but in someone else. Yeah, I, I find this practice helpful for me when I, I have someone I consider wise and we all might have some people we consider wise, alive or not alive anymore. And uh, just to ask the question, what would he or she feel about this? Or how would he or she behave? Or how would he or she feel about my behavior? Uh, and, and the self-reflective quality. So instead of the periscope going out, almost seeing yourself as the other <laughs> uh, from the perspective of a, a wise lens um, yeah. might be helpful. So to have somebody that inspires or you, that, you, that you admire and just considering him now and again, oh, how would this person perceive my actions or words? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So may you not commit even the most trivial thing that the wise in someone else would censure. And may all forms of existence experience happiness and safety. And may all of them be drenched in happy minds. Hmm. Dear Francis, this is what's coming up for me. I, as you speak, I, I, I feel this in nature. When I'm in nature, I feel the, uh, the slowing downness, you know, uh, the, the flow of life. Yet we have created an artificial life for ourselves. We, hmm. we have so many screens after screens and of uh, information and lights and colors and shapes, this bombardment of artificial stimulation. Uh, this is becoming harder and harder to practice. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's true. And I, I, I find it remarkable, uh, uh, Basker, that you keep, you keep referring to nature. You did the same in the first episode. Of uh, the of this series, you, you you thought of trees and nature, and and it's true, you know. Then this is also why why the, the Buddha himself advised you advised his, his his followers, his practitioners, to be homeless, to because to be homeless in those days meant to live in nature. Mm -hmm. It meant to wander. Yeah. So so this connection with with, with the natural state is very important. Yeah. It is. Oh, yeah. well, you go into nature, everything is slow and yeah. playful. All that you pointed to, I, I, yeah. you're describing just me, you know, in the forest. And uh, every yeah. now and again, something dramatic might happen, but it doesn't last very long. <laughs> it's usually little animals running around, you know? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, that is the description of someone who is ready, yeah? So we have had these characteristics and then these two poetic lines, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now we have an analysis of universality because may all forms of ex existence be happy and safe, may all of them be drenched in happy minds, yeah? What does it mean, all? That's it. Mm -hmm. It means whatsoever forms of existence there are, be there, be they weak or be they strong without exception, be they long or be they huge or be they short or small or tall or somewhere in between, hmm. no matter what size they have. So even the tiniest creature Invisible. May it, whether it be seen or unseen, visible or non-visible, whether it be living nearby, under your foot, or very far away, whether it is born or as yet unborn, all these forms of existence are the object of our wish that 
may they all be drenched in a happy mind. Oh my, what that's that's pure meta. That's pure loving, loving kindness. There's something that comes up for me in these teachings is. And the Buddha's very first teaching is very famous. We all know life is suffering. But after that, it does not dwell on this at all. There is no, mm. if you don't do this, these bad things will happen. If you don't, it, it's all this so positive. It's so inspiring. Yes, we acknowledge there's suffering in life. Okay. And here's how to come out of it. And, and all the focus after that is about how to come out of it. And that's so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and uh, opening our hearts in such a profound way. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I am also sure that with, with the, the, the analysis of universality that we have now, that mm. nothing escapes from this. Huh? It's, mm. it's sure that it, it, this is about everything. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's not just about what we would say are living forms. Huh? It's about literally everything. I, when I read this, I, I think of experiences that, that I've had in, in Japanese monasteries, you know, where, mm -hmm. where they teach you that, that, that you, should, you should proceed in nature also yeah, in such a way that you do not disturb anything whatsoever. Yeah. This practice in Japanese is called Wu Wei. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Wu Wei, it's, it's moving through an environment and leaving not even a tracer, leaving nothing behind, as if you have not been there. Wow. <laughs> so nothing has been disturbed. And now we come to the how-to. Okay. We're, we're almost there. It's, it's, it's just such a, these texts are so, beauty in, so beautiful in their simplicity. Mm. But now, what we now get is like like sort of a, a, a pedagogical method, methodology of, of, of kindness. No? So uh, um, it's also again, it's a mixture of being a list and a and, and a poem. As you yes. Would say. Yeah. Yes. So may one not deceive one another. May one not insult one another. May one not be angry at one another. Or may one not have any kind of ill will towards one another. All this means there's a lot there. may one not wish harm to each other so may one not deceive one another there's of course lying and cheating at one way but a more subtle i find it points to authenticity you know to to be to be very real with what we're experiencing so in a way you know when it, it, it right down to somebody says hey how are you doing I'm fine, but you're not really fine. You know, it's a form of deception. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and and uh, speaking our, our our truth in in a, in a with loving kindness, I think also points to uh, to this uh, notion of uh, just really being honest with who we are at this moment, our emotions, our mental state, exactly. our physical state, and so on, our spiritual state. Um, so this, that's a practice to be absolutely. Yeah. In integrity with our experience our words and our actions um yeah. this would the, yeah, the key word you're using was is integrity yeah? this this is what i read here yeah? mm -hmm. it's 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 integrity yeah? the, the not deceiving one another means being truthful mm. it means being 100 percent truthful to yourself but also to the other yeah mm -hmm. so do that's the, the the next line is not insulting one another it's it's mm. it's it's always assuming good intent yes that is an important one i think yeah. never be angry 
never express or feel ill will towards, uh, towards the other and not never wishing harm uh, uh, to, uh, to the other. So, so all taken together, I would say it is, it is always assume good intent. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and act thereupon. So this is like give the benefit of the doubt, sort of a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe the doubt is too weak. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. It's a. Uh, I, I sense this came from a state realization that it is really one interconnected fabric. So this idea of deceiving somebody else is you're you're essentially lying to yourself, uh, because at a at a level beyond. You know, as more subtle, all sentient beings have that same quality, which is sentient. Uh, mm -hmm. So <laughs> we are all the same, really. So uh, this notion of of all of these behaviors of uh, being unkind and so on, you know, it's uh, it's almost like putting one's hand in the fire. It's it's it's. Uh, so I find that that state realization makes this much more accessible in a way. That uh, yeah. because if we, I find if you try to understand these things intellectually, it's so difficult. It's 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 so it's such a profound degree of loving kindness that one can't intellectually even hope to accomplish it. <laughs> you know, yeah. to walk through a forest without leaving even a scent is yeah. like it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to break a few twigs along the way. I'm going to you know. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. to intellectually grasp it, I I find is a very overwhelming. Yet the spirit of it, the intention of it, I find is very beautiful. And to have I love so much that. what you say. Because the, when, when you say this cannot be thought of just intellectually, yeah. it is as if the, the author, supposedly the Buddha himself, uh, um, just realizes the same at this very moment. Because in the next verse, he, he bursts out in a piece of poetry, in a simile, a metaphor, because he feels that these words are not adequate enough you know the, this 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 is too much of an intellectual analysis and so he wants to express it differently in in so that we would understand more with the heart or with the body yeah and listen how these how, how the, the text just collapses to another level altogether yeah i will just repeat the previous verse and then go on to the next one so may not one deceive one another May not one ever insult another. May one not feel anger or feel or express ill will to the other. May one never wish harm to the other. You know, just like a mother who with her own life would save her child, let us say her only child, like that mother, so should be radiated to all beings the thought and the sensation of boundless, all-encompassing love. It's a very simple way to, understand, to feel it. Yes, the love of a mother. Yeah. Uh, to a first child, you know, even a, it doesn't matter, but still, to, to their first child is even so much stronger as well. And imagine being this way to all sentient beings as yes. you walk through a forest, even, or as you walk through your organization, or as you walk through your house. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to, 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 to my clients, even even in a corporate environment, you know, I, I, I often whisper this to, to people in a leadership role. Yeah? I, I, I whisper to them, if, if you want to be really a good leader, yeah, just assume that everybody is your only firstborn child. <laughs> and with that state of mind, lead mm. and love and protect and and embrace and 
and raise. Everything there. help rise. Yeah. Yeah. I I have you know I have a young child at home, so this this really really hits home, <laughs> uh, very literally and figuratively. Uh, I see this love all the time. It's so so powerful. Um, it's so inspiring. If anybody who has noticed this, this kind of love and uh, to embody this love as our state of being, almost like a fragrance of a rose, not towards any one person, um, just as a way of being, seems to be what this teaching points to, a way, a way of being that every sentient being is their first child. Wow. It goes further. Mm. Suffuse the whole universe alike with that thought of boundless warm-heartedness with neither enmity nor rivalry above below across without any boundaries or obstructions whether you be standing walking sitting reclining as long as you stay awake, may this mindful thought be firmly held. That, for sure, is the most sublime state that you, as a human being, can ever reach. Mm. You know, I hear these words, it's... Uh... Sometimes, you know, as, for example, we have a hobby, say I play tennis and you see a professional tennis player, you go, oh my God, they're so good. It's unbelievable, you know, or, or you, maybe somebody does whatever it might be and you look at the master and go, oh my God. In this case, we're all loving people. We love it, love this, love that, you know, but at this level you go, oh, wow, that's possible. <laughs> it's, uh, this is the love mastery. Um, and I, I, intellectually, it might seem uh, a bridge much too far, yet experientially, uh, we've all experienced states like this of just pure unbound love. I can certainly say I have, you know, sometimes you just feel just, just this yeah. deep connection with everything. Um, I truly believe, Vaskar, that we are all not only capable of this, but as you say, yeah, that we all have this in us. Mm. and And if you look well enough, all of us, we, we will find instances where we have practiced this. Yes. Yeah. The only thing is that we have these boundaries. This is why in, in, the, in, in the poem, it says that we should get rid of Boundless. these boundaries and these obstructions, you know, because these obstructions are, are, are built in our daily lives and in the fact that we, we need to earn our living and, and we have jobs and we are uh, pressed in traffic and we need to be at our appointment in time and mm. it is so easy to just hit the horn and express our impatience and and these these obstructions you know are are, are the things that are the hardest to overcome and then what, if we can do that our true nature will will resurface and I, I, I believe 100% that our true nature is what is being described here. Let us take a moment to just maybe unpack this word boundless. You know, when, mm -hmm. when we look at the word yoga, yoga, it, it, it means unity, the oneness and all, mm -hmm. boundless, points to this boundlessness. Uh, and I also do know that a lot of people practice this notion of setting healthy boundaries. You know, we have to set boundaries mm -hmm. so that we can, uh, and and I just want to offer that it is not one or the other, it's also and, you know, in, in a practical way, we can set boundaries into what is noise and not actual sound. So remove distractions, remove things that are taking away uh, from our well being. So, but what this is pointing to is not in the material, in a, in a practical sense, it's, it's, in the, uh, it's referring more to in a sense of our love. So we can even, I imagine, 
say no to things or, or, or walk away from things, yet that, mm. that love that's there behind that action is mm. boundless. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think of, of uh, I, I think of, when you speak of yoga, mm. that always the, the just the first verse of Patanjali, Mm. explains it all yeah mm. it's yoga what is yoga it it is chitta vritti niroda that's what it is huh? it's it's the niroda the stopping of the vritti of the turbulences of the chitta of the mind yeah. mm. <laughs> when i read the obstructions here the, the, the obstructions that we need to to overcome it's the same thing. These obstructions are these, this turbulence of the mind. You know, <laughs> it's this turbulence. It's the it's the the the, the vritta of the chitta. It can be so felt. It's so felt. What you're speaking to me to me is so. It's such a felt experience. You can feel yeah. when your mind is jamming up your boundless love. <laughs> it, it, it's a felt experience. It's not at yeah. all mystical. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then there's just one one con con concluding um, uh, verse left here. Yeah? I, I, I should say it's not at all mystical. I didn't yeah. mean mysticism is is uh, is. Uh, huh? I just wanted to say that it's not at all magical in ter terms of fantas fantastic thinking. That's how I meant it. Uh, mm -hmm. Not to shed a negative light on mysticism. That's just I just wanted to no, clarify no, sure. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Now free from deviating thoughts from the uh, uh, citta vritti, yeah? mm -hmm. free from the deviating thoughts, steeped in the art of skillful life, gaining true insight with suffering and sensual delights all subdued and never again having to come back and endure more suffering, this is the result for all who practice this kind of loving kindness. So now we're moving into result phase. We've moved beyond the practice yes. and now we're looking yeah. at the result. Yeah, this yeah. is very important, yeah. This is a result. Yes. All yeah, of the is an effect. It's not a cause. Yeah. You can't practice this. This is the effect. The practice came before. This is very important to understand. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Many yeah. people see this as a practice. It's not the practice. I just wanted to really exactly. emphasize that. This is the effect. The, the cause yeah. is something else entirely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 what is interesting, I think, and what is what is lovely also is that this this verse describing the effect. It's not clear whether this effect is limited to the practitioner, mm -hmm. or the effect is also uh, uh, stretched out to the one who is uh, the, the recipient of our uh, mm -hmm. uh, loving kindness. Yeah? Yes. So the, I, I think the suggestion is that the effect is like it's it's like running over. And and it's it's it works like an ink spot that grows around us, mm. and is no longer limited to the practice itself, but but affects even the objects of our practice. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, it's, again I go back uh, like ink blotch and also the fragrance of a rose for sure. People who mm. this, uh, come like oh they get so moved by the beauty of that scent or. So, uh, I mean, at, at a very practical level, we're all sort of emotion transducers. So if I'm in a state of anger or, or some sort of resistance, people can pick up on that felt sense. And conversely, when we're in a state of this unbound loving kindness, uh, anybody who's been near a mystic or somebody who exudes that quality can, can touch upon it. And it brings about that quality. And I will say this as well. I was in the presence of this, you know, saint, uh, there are thousands of us. And as soon as this person walked in, we all just became better human beings. You could just see that we, there was a wave of 
of, of uh, goodness that took over. Who knows how we were before we came, but just in their presence, you could feel this. Everybody just became more human, more kind, more loving. Yeah, it's a well-known effect eh? that if, if you want your team to be drenched in loving kindness, you should just start practicing it. <laughs> There we go. It's that simple. Yeah. Well, it, I don't know if it's that simple, but <laughs> well, yeah. not easy. <laughs> simple. Yeah. Uh, but no, I understand. I understand. It is. Uh, it is. It, the practice is simple. That, but I'm complicated, which makes yeah. the practice complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shall I read you a very beautiful translation done by a monk called Ratna Prabha yeah, that I came across? And I think it's a, it's a modern translation. It's not really close to the text in Pali, but I really like this. And I would like to share that with you. Yes. It's, a, as you know by now, it's a very small text. Yeah? Uh, but in this modern uh, translation, Ratna Prabha is the name of a monk. Huh? Yeah? Um, it sounds like this. If you are ready, to know what is truly good for you and understand the possibility of reaching a state of perfect peace, then this is how you need to live. First, become a capable person, one who is really, really, really upright gently spoken, flexible, and not conceited. Then become contented and happy with few worries and an uncomplicated life. Make sure your sense experience remains calm and controlled. Be duly respectful. Don't hanker after families or peer groups. And avoid doing anything unworthy that wiser people would criticize. And then meditate like this. May all be happy and secure. May all beings become happy in their heart of hearts. And think of every living thing without exception, weak, strong, from the smallest to the largest, whether you can see them or not, living nearby, or far away, beings living now or yet to arise, may all beings become happy in their heart of hearts. May no one deceive or look down on anyone else, anywhere, for any reason whether through feeling angry or through reacting to someone else, may no one want an other to suffer. As strongly as a mother, perhaps risking her own life, cherishes her child, her only child, as strongly as that, develop an unlimited heart for all beings and develop an unlimited heart of friendliness for the entire universe sending metta above below all around you beyond all narrowness beyond all rivalry beyond all hatred whether you are staying in one place or traveling, 
whether you are sitting somewhere down or in bed, in all your waking hours, rest in this mindfulness, which is known as like living in heaven right here and now. In this way, you will come to let go of views, be spontaneously ethical and get perfect insight. And leaving behind craving for sense pleasures from the rounds of rebirth, you will finally be completely free. Thus ends the Karaniya Metta Sutta. Uh, I'm so, so moved by that. I, I, it starts with this very sincere question. Do I really know what's good for me? Just to be open to the possibility <laughs> to ask that question. Do I really truly know what's good for me? And uh, that's the road right there. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 isn't it wonderful how beautifully poetic these texts are? Uh, how, how simple at the same time and straightforward, and yet they are poems of life. And, and perhaps, perhaps by some, they are, they are seen as utopian. Mm. But they're not. Each line describes just, not just the possibility of, of human beings, but as we discussed, describes the, 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 the very nature of human beings sometimes hidden under layers of yeah. complications. complications. And you know, um, the very first thing you said was see yourself as capable. This is the very mm -hmm. first thing we said. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as I heard you speaking, literally, as I was allowing those words to enter into my being, I, I, I felt the spontaneous loving awareness taking over above, below, and all around. It, it was a felt experience of loving awareness. So not only is it, is, is it capable, is it was actually happening. <laughs> so, uh, and this is not, this is, uh, I would even say that to the point, this is our inherent condition. This is actually who we are. This is the yeah. essence of it. It is yeah. much more of a remembering. It's much of a coming back. Um, so do I really know what's good for me almost comes back to, do I really know the goodness that is me? Yeah, precisely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do I really know or, the goodness uh, that is me? Yes. And how do I get to, uh, to re-explore and rediscover the goodness that is you? how to re-explore this. I think, I feel this text is some kind of a, of a, a, a methodological approach for it. Yeah, if nothing It's like else. a program, it's like a manifesto. Yeah, yeah, it's very clearly, very, you know, very secular, very accessible, yeah. um, very, very simple in a sense, there's no high philosophy. No, no. And there's no need for any religiosity. Yeah, and if nothing else, just hearing it can create a state change, I find. If nothing else, exactly. you can see them as instructions and implement them, wonderful. Yet if nothing else, if you just hear it, mm -hmm. one feels it. Yeah. A, a before and after change. <laughs> yeah. You know, from this, the this is the strain, the strain that, that, that is felt by the people who recite it. Uh, and then this, this, this Pali chanting is so beautiful and it's... it's it, it has this, this, um, this aesthetic quality mm. of, um, 
of of rhythm and and and, and melody and 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 it's 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 like a, a an all encompassing experience yeah, that mm -hmm. uh, that never um, uh, 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 leaves someone un untouched you know uh, i want to reflect this back you know um to where we are now as a collective this kind of love might seem so far away perhaps in the relationship that we're in be it professional personal this kind of love might seem so far away and finally perhaps at the most intimate level to ourselves accessing this kind of love might feel yeah. so far away regardless assert and affirm <laughs> that you are capable we are capable yeah true it might look far away yeah, yeah. but, but I, I i make it a point you know when, when doing workshops with teams and groups yeah, to just break these texts down into simple conversations and i never mention that they're buddhist texts you know I just break them down in, in simple themes and simple topics. Yeah. And then you feel that people, uh, generally speaking, this, uh, these elements, you know, they are recognizable for people. And, and people see themselves in them. And it's not so hard for people to have conversations about them. And these conversations um, help very much to... to to bring to the surface this boundless love or parts of these uh, waves of this <laughs> flow of uh, boundless love again, Just, albeit parts. So I, I'm, I'm not without hope because in, in, in my experience, re really these texts are, 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 are valuable, uh, they're practical, they're adaptable and they're usable in any circumstances often provided you don't mention uh, uh, that they are from a Buddhist source, because that very often would turn like corporate clients maybe immediately against them. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I must say, I'm from a very opposite perspective. I'm, I actually assert and affirm the source, you know, that this, this goes back thousands of years. And to understand, mm -hmm. this source is actually very beautiful. You know, Buddhism mm -hmm. to me is more yeah. of a science than a religion, for sure. There's no mm -hmm. imagining, you know, mystical beings. There's no uh, fantasy. There is so grounded in practical, experiential mm -hmm. reality and that you can experience it directly for yourself, your instructions. Uh, so, uh, yes, that's, that's the spoiler mm -hmm. alert. You know, the yeah. Buddhism is more of a science of our own human nature uh, mm -hmm. and our and, and, and our own being um, than it is uh, uh, to me, from, from my perspective, what is traditionally yeah. seen as a religion. Because religion to me requires, uh, a, 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 I'm projecting here, but it requires a degree of blind faith. Just mm -hmm. believe me. Yeah. Believe me or believe that there is this, mm -hmm. believe that there is that. There is no okay. belief here. This is just nothing. One plus one equals two. Exactly. So exactly. yes, and that and that is what Buddhism is. <laughs> so there it yes, is. Exactly. There you go. Um, but, but yet some people have this 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 um, uh, people who, uh, presume or assume that this is going to be like uh, religious indoctrination and and so, uh, let, let, let me tell let me tell you an anecdote. Go ahead, please, please, I, yeah. I, I used to do a workshop and uh, a particular workshop years ago. And, and it was called what would the buddha do at work mm -hmm. that was the name of the workshop yeah, yeah. but nobody came nobody That's came uh -huh. nobody uh -huh. came and then i i what i what would I still, Jesus do everybody comes <laughs> i kept doing the workshop i kept doing the workshop but i gave it another title That's it. i understand and it, I, understand. I, I called it workplace ethics for dummies <laughs> i understand and all of a sudden the every workshop was full and it was the exact same workshop. So we, I, I've done the same thing. I totally understand. Uh, you know, <laughs> we turn meditation into awareness practice and all this sort of a thing uh, because there's intimidation. Yet I find that society is mature enough for re-education. That uh, 
what you think it is, not what it is. So, so let's let's uh, let up our game and our openness, <laughs> because uh, yes, this ancient wisdom is so important right now. And in, in sometimes translating, we might even distort it. So it's very important to be like like you have just said this text almost directly from the source. Uh, and something else that came up so strongly for me that in the beginning I'd mentioned something like speak some body that inspires you, uh, and and how would they interpret your behavior your actions your words and so on and it just occurred to me it doesn't have to be somebody else it could be very well this text itself how would this text you know <laughs> interpret it could be just that it could be inspiring as that uh you know just carrying us with us and from the perspective of this text you know um as a beacon to move towards if nothing else um and yes the source is ancient and it's beautiful and it's accessible uh, and, <laughs> and I thank you so much for sharing this so beautifully. It's a pleasure, Oscar. Talking to you always is. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow we'll do the Kalama Sutta. Yeah. Kalama Sutta. Very good, my dear. Yeah. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Oscar. <laughs>